Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Well, I've known you now for, would you say, over a year? Is it over a year? Oh, yeah. About 16 months. Yeah. And you've always said that the disclosure will never happen. No, not a, no, it won't happen. Ever. When you say never, what's I mean, never. I mean, never. Yeah. And the day it happens is the last day of our existence. Just to let you know, I think that humans have been here for a long, long time, millions of years. And uh, this is just my opinion. Uh, I, I go by um, a lot of different things that come up with this theory on what I believe in. And I think with the evidence that's been found, you know, look, they found and I don't know if, it, if it's wrong or whatever, but a hammer this is what, 800,000 years old or something? I don't know if I'm wrong on that. But they found some things that were a million years old, two yep. million years old. I mean, how could these tools or a watch or a figurine of an alien face or a, an airplane design, how could that be if we weren't even around? Uh, that means that... Uh, I well, in my opinion, I believe humans have existed here many times, and I think in the Bible, I'm not sure where it says it, but man has been well, the earth has been reset like six times or something. I'm not sure. I know that comes from the matrix too, but I'm not thinking about that. But because the matrix is based on things that have been written and theories about our existence, so I don't know. Well, we had that conversation the other night. What if we're not actually real? You know, what if it is a matrix? Who right. Knows? We will never know. And would it matter? Yeah. No, would it matter to you? Yeah. No. It would matter. Yeah, but would it actually matter? Would it make a difference to your life? Yeah. Would it? Well, yeah. I'll be pissed. <laughs> no. No, what uh, I'm saying is, what I'm no. saying is, would it make a difference to how you'd have to live your life? You'd still have to go to work. You'd still have to make money. No, everything would change except, I mean, everything would stay the same. My mind would be different at that point. I would look at, well, I already look at things like that anyway. So like I, I try, I, yeah, I try to find glitches. Maybe we, oh, oh, maybe because you and I have been talking about one, 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 one and three, three and all this stuff about numerology maybe that's the glitch it could well i i have i've thought that many times oh, i just did what if it is I don't, and that's how they reset us like I, i'm a one personality you're a three i don't know so are it's you, just so weird huh to the disclosure part yeah I've always thought that how it's ever going to happen is it'll be Mars. They'll say they found some sort of life on Mars and it'll be small. It'll be some sort of something that's living under the surface, hmm. some microorganism. That's probably how that, that'll be the that'll be how we find out. Wait, for the, for the first time. You're talking that's disclosure? Not disclosure, no. <laughs> That's what we. That's when we're going to find out there is other life forms out there. It will be Mars. Oh yeah. Well, I think they already said that, didn't they? They said they had found water, but they haven't found life on there, have they? I could well, be... in that in the Mars rock that they found in Antarctica, I think. Really? Remember? Why have I not yeah. seen this? Well, not recently. It was like. 25 years ago when you remember when they cracked the rock open and it had the uh fossilized organism in it really yeah it's, so i need it's, to look this up i need to look this up look I, it up i now. might <laughs> i might i can't look at i can't look, it'll, it'll knock our video out i've just told you how bad the computer is i need a new one as soon as you see the picture you'll remember the story yeah 
Yeah, they they many years ago there was a rock that they they that came from Mars because you know they analyzed it and they cracked it open and sure enough, I mean it was on Time magazine and everything. Why do I not know about this? I feel like I've been like not in the loop now. Well, you were young, maybe like six, seven, or I don't know. Maybe do you, that's why. I'll tell you what got me intrigued about Mars. I remember when I was. Um, about 16 years old and i went to a news agent and bought a magazine and on the magazine it had the the face of mars yep and i was like what and i was showing my dad it and my dad was like yeah it's just a rock pareidolia yep (laughs) or not oh not (laughs) yeah so, so what what is the plan now, Rich? I mean, hopefully you're not going to get taken out again. Um, going forward with Goof on Radio, what is it you want to achieve? Well, let's get one thing straight. Nobody took me out. Nobody. They tried, I think. I think they tried twice. Tried twice by scaring me, by following me. Well, three times. Tried breaking into my house, and the neighbor stopped it. And um, taking down the, the website or killing my computer, killed the website. I always say that. I say that wrong. They, they took the website down, but they didn't. They took the computer that had the website. Yep. Um, plans now are strictly goof on radio stream and once or twice a month going on location and uh doing live streaming from the location it'll you know it'll be live it'll be on location i'm gonna go to the stardust ranch perimeter which is just like skinwalker ranch but it's here in arizona it's about 40 miles from me um so i'll go there i'm gonna go to tombstone in the summer early june tombstone i'm setting that up as we speak and uh, I'm going to be going to probably this weekend go to the UFO that is buried under a dam about 10 minutes from me in Arizona. So that'll be this this weekend. Oh, wait a second. Oh, yeah, I got to do a Space Dial Radio. Maybe Friday night. There's a UFO buried underneath a dam. Yeah, yeah, it's the dumbest thing. They, they, it was just on a, another uh, TV show. Um, in Arizona, we have a place called Dreamy Draw. And you, you, it used to be a two-lane passage over the mountains from the suburbs of Phoenix to the city of Phoenix. So it was really like a nice over-the-mountain. You get to see the valley up above, and then you sink right in. And it is now a 10-lane highway that goes through there. But off to the side, and you can see it when you drive by, you see this little tiny dam that's probably, I don't know, maybe 50, 60 feet long. And it's on the slope of a mountain, not a deep slope. But if the water was to come down this mountain it would spill onto the freeway. It doesn't make any sense. And I'm going to show that in the satellite imagery. It's just, there's no reason for a dam there. There's no river that runs there. There's no aqueduct that runs there. This UFO crashed, I think it was in 47. I think it was the same year. I may be wrong. I'll have to look it up. And they couldn't get it out of the ground. So they just buried it. And put a fake dam over it. That's the story. Again, this is another story. I've not. There's so much to discover in this field. It's <laughs> it's it's mind-boggling. Well, you... yeah. And the thing is about this area, uh, because recently I was going to go take a look at it up close, but they have a, a police car that sits out there most of the time. And I don't know if it if they're doing something like the building something or he's just there, but um, he's always there when I go there. 
I'll tell you what, next time you go there, take a, a spade, a, sh- a shovel, yeah, with yeah. you and see what they do. Just <laughs> just take the shovel. What do you, well, yeah, I'd say I'd be hunting for shaylight or something. I don't know. Hunting rocks. Has anybody tried to dig anything up around there? Not that, that I know of. But you, you, not, huh? But they'd get arrested pretty quickly if they did. I don't know if they would get arrested. I don't know. Because um, it's not like it's closed off, but they, they recently put some sort of, uh, from the TV show that was just on, they put some sort of shack there or something. and when, But there's a fence around it, so you can't get in. And I think there was a like a, a like a hatch with stairs that went down. I'm not too sure about that though, but um, it's interesting. I, it'll be an interesting little experience to go up there, and, and I could get arrested. I don't know. That's the beauty of it all. I doubt it. But the thing about this is, it's not you can't park anywhere. You, I have to literally, I have to park about a quarter of a mile away. Because there's hiking trails on the other side of that mountain and people go hiking. But there's also homes around there. So I don't know what's going to happen. And there's only one lane that's just enough for a, a car to go one way and another car to go the other. So I can't park there close to it. Or else I could stop traffic. I'm looking forward to seeing this. And this is going to be a live video. Yeah. Yeah. Probably Friday night, this Friday. Excellent. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, you know, we, we talked about a lot of different things. Um, but I do want to let people know, you got me all wrong. And I think you guys should uh, give me a chance. <laughs> people think that uh, I'm a jerk. But I don't know. I can't talk any other way, you know, for, for people to... Uh, to believe that I'm serious because a lot of people don't think I'm serious about ufology. I think I'm too serious and it spills out into anger, humor, and it's the only way I can cope with it, I guess. I think, I mean, for me, I, I deal with humor from somebody who's a little bit pissed about something better than just, so, you could go the opposite way. You could just be really angry, you know, and, uh, but then nobody would subscribe <laughs> if you was, if you were just yelling down the mic. Well, you better have a lot of good facts if you're just going to be yelling on the mic. You got to bring some substance or else it ain't going to work. I don't know. I don't know why people listen. Uh, I think people are finding out, though, that. When, like when I go over a video and debunk the one that was just out there with the pilot. See, see that, that, that can't happen what just happened. As I'm talking to you, I know what I just saw out of the corner of my eye. I'm not going to talk about it. We'll talk off air, off air, okay. Okay. off recording. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but we, yeah, but um, I forgot what I was saying. Damn it. They, I think what you were saying is the fact that both of us, I mean, you, you especially, you, you, a lot of the, the stuff that comes into light, like, you know, the Tic Tac UFO, the, uh, to this, the upcoming bit of footage that's coming from to the Stars Academy that we haven't yet seen, all of this for you just keep, kind of just makes you angry and you just like, why what's going on why should we trust these people and you know i i appreciate that though i appreciate the honesty because i think sometimes people especially if you've just got into the subject you'll get really excited and you'll be like okay something's gonna happen something's gonna happen on the news and you be you might even be telling your mom and dad your best friend your grandma and granddad <laughs> you know you telling them that aliens are here and this is not me saying that I don't believe in the subject because I wouldn't have this channel if I didn't believe in it. But I think we're both in, I mean, you're 
you've matured quite a lot compared to what I'm like because I've only been in the field for uh, four four years doing it on YouTube. Before that, I was just watching U- UFO videos and believing pretty much anything that was out there. Um, but I think you get to a point where you just kind of get a little bit pissed about it all and you think, what's it all really about? What? How much have you learned in four years? And then imagine yourself in where I'm at, 15 years. I started uh, in ufology when I was, what, 36? Yeah. I was your age. So this is it for you. I'm not. You're looking at the future. I'm 39, (laughs) but thanks, Rich. No, I said when you started. Oh, yeah, when I started, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you were about, I was the same age, about 35, 36. It was, uh, my birthday's in March. 2004 april's when i started uh seeing the lights with my wife yeah 16 years uh, i don't know where i'm going all i know is with the what I, my point was where now i remembered where i was going to go what you learned in four years and where you're going to be in 15 16 years you're going to learn a lot of stuff and you're going to make mistakes along the way. Yes. And no, and all that stuff. I mean, you're just going to be out there trying to figure stuff out. But one thing that stays the same is that we're never any closer to the truth with ufology. That was a long way to go for that. Um, but it's true. No matter how much screaming and yelling, nice talking jokes that I crack. Um, it seems like it's falling on deaf ears. And if you want to have a little more fact, on what I just said, a, a little proof, I mean. Um, you can even talk about UAP, because when TTSA started shoving UAP down our throats, it confused the general public. You ask any, anybody, because that was their goal, was to reach out to the general public and let them know UFOs are real. And they did a fantastic job, but it's not their fault that it didn't work. People just don't care. Because you ask anybody in the general public, have you seen a UAP? And they'll be like, (laughs) what do you mean, a UFO? Well, why don't you just say that? Yeah, I've seen a UFO. What's a UAP? Unidentified aerial phenomenon. Oh, my God, it's complicated enough. Just stick to UFO, chief. And you're like, all right. So you stick to UFO, but they don't want to. It's got this bag. It's got all this baggage with it. Stick me, yeah stigmata (laughs) it's so stupid that anyway there that's my point the point is you can shove it in their faces you're not going to be any closer to getting it out to the public you're not going to be any closer to getting any truth from the government and i don't care if the navy is now accepting pilots reports they're still going to look at them as nut jobs anyway nothing changes no, the thing, you're wrong, Rich. Now we get to hear what happened when before the story would just be stuffed in a in a closet. Now we now we get to at least hear from the pilots what they saw. Yeah, and what does that do? It goes right into the filing cabinet and they lock it away and you'll never see it again. That's what they told us. That's what the government actually said. Once we get the report, we file it away with all the others. Meaning you're never going to see it again. In your opinion, in the in the last five years, what has been what stood out to you the most to, that's made you think, you know, what that could be the real deal? Uh, every, every bit of every bit of footage, every every story you've heard in the last five years. Five years. Mm. There's a couple of them, actually. The one that intrigued me the most, which got me really worrying, wondering, (laughs) I was worried they were going to lie, and they did, was the Sunspot Observatory in Oumuamua. You couldn't have made it more obvious that something happened when Oumuamua came around. Shutting down Sunspot Observatory, giving us a reason that, oh, it was... You know, somebody into the 
pedo thing. And, uh, you know, we just had to do some really good research and make sure that nobody got hurt. So we closed down the observatory to do an investigation. Yeah, sure. To go into everybody's computer, to go through everybody's homes, maybe to plant stuff. And then they said they found nothing. Yeah. Everything's that, fine. That was that because was they, very suspicious. Right. Because if they said they found something, then they've got a lot of explanation, a lot of explaining to do. And that's uh, something they try to avoid at all costs. I don't know, man. I think Oumuamua and the Sunspot Observatory, there's something going on. And uh, maybe Oumuamua Go on, was say it, a, bitch. Say it. Was a burrito. <laughs> <laughs> a barufo. A barufo. <laughs> it could be. I, I mean, it, it, that's it, what stands out to answer yeah. your question. Yeah, no, I, you know, I wouldn't have even, I wouldn't even said that. I don't even know what I would have said. But yeah, well, well, no, well, I totally well, agree. Well, what, well, were, what, what were you thinking? I see, I was actually thinking, and I know your opinion of To the Stars Academy, but I do think that. Some of the, in fact, all three, all three bits of footage were quite, you know, they were compelling. I mean, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what they are. For all I know, I, and I, I, I know there is, um, there's something not quite right about the whole the way it's been revealed. I'm talking in fucking in, in, in riddles here, but um, there's something about it. Whether it's something that we're supposed to see and it's out there for a reason because the government wants us to see these three pieces of footage for some reason, yeah? Or it is a little piece of a kind of tease of disclosure. Do you really now? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, but I know your, your feelings onto the stars Academy and, but I, I don't know what your feelings are on all three pieces of the, um, the footage. Well, here's something that a lot of people forget. I don't know. Was it the go fast I think one of those videos came out a couple of years ago. It was the, leaked out. The Go Fast was the last one, wasn't it? I think so. But the, there was the one that got, yeah, not the Go Fast, um, the gimbal or whatever they call yeah, it. Yeah, the, the gimbal footage. Well, that got leaked out. And I think when they did that leak a few years ago, that they were trying to get this evidence out there to see how the public would react. And then a few years later, um, they put it in with these other two videos. See, there, there's nothing accidental, I think, about some of these leaks. I think they're called leaks, but it's the government uh, trying to test public reaction. And I think by now they would know how the public would react if there was a disclosure of some kind. It, look, it, it's either disclosure or no disclosure. There's no in between. So I don't want disclosure to come out and then we don't get to find out about anything else. You know? Okay, there's aliens here. Where do they come from? You know, how'd they get here and all that stuff? We'll get all that stuff. I want to know everything. We'll never get everything. Like, you know, like, was did the Phoenix Lights, was that you? Or was that another alien species? You know, I want to know about all these sightings that have happened in the past. Was Roswell one of your family members? Is that is that why you're here? You haven't heard from him? <laughs> well, there's some people that try to debunk the Phoenix lights and say that they were flares. Yeah, because there was two sightings. There was the 8 to 815 sighting, which started all the way up in Laughlin, Nevada. 
came through Kingman, Arizona, down through Flagstaff, Sedona, Payson, all the way over Phoenix, and then to Tucson, and then nobody knows. Now, there was a couple of videos that people got at 10 o'clock at night, but the thing I just told you about happened between 8 and 8.30, and that was the one to two mile wide craft that flew over the center of Arizona. And you want to know something weird, Ollie? Remember I was talking about the buried UFO? Yep. It flew right over that. I just realized it. It flew. It, there's a, a the freeway. Now it's a freeway. It's called the Payestawa Peak, which used to be Dreamy Draw. Well, it's actually State Route 51. 51 is a eight-lane freeway that goes directly down the middle of Phoenix. And... Um, mm. The, along the walls of the freeway, there's a story being told. I think it's from the Hohokam Indians. And it, and it talks about the visitors from the stars which they came. And flying over the 51 is what this craft did because it followed the storyline. It was directions to tell it where to go. And that was Star Mountain, which is in Arizona better known as the Estrella Mountains. And the Estrella Mountains is where the flares were dropped at 10 o'clock at night. And where, why would they drop them there, you ask? Because right behind that is the Barry Goldwater Gunnery Range, <laughs> where they drop flares in March. And you can get the schedule. So I think 10 o'clock was flares. I think the 8 to 8.30 was the legitimate sighting that people forget. And they think this 10 o'clock one was the UFO, but it wasn't. Well, there was like thousands of witnesses, weren't there, to this? Thousands. They say 10,000 for sure, but it's probably about 100,000 people saw it. Because that night was the night that hale Bop Comet was at its peak in the sky. And you could see it with the naked eye. So people were already outside with their cameras. But this craft that flew over, you could see right through it, they said. And there was these lights that looked like they were in a canister. And the light didn't spread out like a normal light. It looked like it was made of the ship and the ship was made of it. And it was swirling lights inside of it. That's what people said. So you just come to the realization that this, this huge craft hovered directly over the UFO that's buried underneath yeah. the dam? It didn't it, hover over it. It flew very slowly over where that is buried. Not only that, um, people verified that on the documentary, The Phoenix Lights, and also Governor Fife Symington said he saw the craft fly directly over that mountain. So maybe there's nothing there now. Maybe it took it. Maybe it took it. <laughs> well, I have an incredible story about a light that was across the mountain range where my parents live. And this light kept getting brighter and brighter every week. They couldn't understand it. I, I did a satellite image of the area. It's just desert. There's nothing there. No mine shafts, nothing out of the ordinary. But there was this light, and I have video of it. And you could see it in the tree. It looked like it was in the tree. And when I went to my parents' house, it was dim, but it was, and then when I went back five days later, it was a little brighter. And I said, hey, the light's getting brighter. And my mom and dad are like, yeah, we noticed. But Richie, what is it? It's been there since we moved here. And they're talking several months already. And I said, that light has been there. Has anybody gone over there? And they're like, you can't get there. It's very dangerous, which it is. It's very dangerous because... There's cactus that can literally kill you there and snakes. I mean, it's in the middle of the desert, um, but you can see it because my parents lived on the mountains and then there was a separation between the mountains and it went up and that's where the light was. It was on this other cliff or plateau whatever Mesa. Well, a couple of nights go by. I get a call at three o'clock in the morning. It's my mom and dad. I'm like, oh my God. I pick up the phone and my I hear them yelling, Richie, you got, can you see from, and I'm like, what are you talking about? My dad's just yelling out directions to me. 
He goes, look, look at now. I lived 50 miles away from them, um, but they were so excited about what happened. And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, can you see lights coming from our area? They're heading your way. And I said, like a UFO? And he, no, 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 they're here. They're taking it out of the ground. And I said, what are you talking about? He goes, the light, they took the light. And I hear my mom screaming, they took the light out of the ground, tell them. I did tell them that already. Well, what had happened was this light was getting brighter and brighter. And three Chinook helicopters flew over to a residential area at three o'clock in the morning, dropped off military people with flashlights, they they put a border around see where my parents house was it was like you could look down into a little canyon because it was a separation between the other mountains but it's all desert but these guys were making sure none of the residents came down the mountain and they were out there with flashlights and the military uniforms and my and I can hear the helicopter on the phone dun, 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 you know that I can hear it and my parents are yelling and my mom, I could hear her in the back. And she goes, they're taking it away in a net. It's like some sort of net. And I said, Dad, I don't see anything. He goes, how can you not see it? And I said, I don't know. He's like, there's three helicopters, Chinooks or whatever they call them. And they're heading directly to I said, I don't see it. So I hung up. And I said, well, I said, call me back in a little bit. And they never called back. So nine o'clock that morning, I went over and talked to them about it. And uh, they said they, they, they were hovering around, you know, hovering over it. And it woke us up. And we seen all these lights, you know, flashlights and everything. And they took this. My dad said it looked like it was probably the size of a beach ball. Not that big, you know, maybe two, three feet. But he said it was so bright, it lit up the whole entire mountain, the, this ball of light. Isn't that a cool story? What? So as as the the Chinook was lifting the object up, it was still lit. It was lit, yeah. And it lit up the entire area, the ground. Wow. Under, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, what could and that I, possibly be? So my mom and dad were having a a party on that Sunday that was coming up. The neighborhood they get together uh, once or twice a month. Um, and they, people were talking about it very cautiously and they were saying that they were awoken. You know, I, I didn't tell, this is my dad telling me what they said. And I said, well, can I just knock on the doors with you and interview them? And my, my parents like, I'm not going to ask my neighbors if they want to talk about that. And, you know, they don't, they don't care. So I never interviewed anyone, but my dad said that um, when they were at that function at their house and the, from the neighborhood, people were like, they would talk about it, but they weren't really admitting it. Like they were embarrassed to talk about it. Now you have to remember this is an older community, 65, you know, most of the people are over 65. They have a different way of thinking. So this, this probably scared them. What could that have actually been? Even if you was to, if you was to try and debunk that and think, well, what could possibly be glowing? For months, it was there. When my parents moved in in February, April, May, June, July, August, it happened in September, October, seven months, and it kept getting brighter. They noticed something like. But they were in the backyard because they had a fantastic panoramic view of the valley. When they were looking across, my dad said he saw the light flicker and thought it was just people hiking. And then he kept seeing a light flicker every now and then because they were always out in the backyard. My dad was either cleaning the pool, cooking, whatever. It was gorgeous. It's Arizona. You know, we have great weather all year round. So he said uh, around June beginning of summer the light stayed on and and it slowly kept getting brighter he said it's always been on he goes i couldn't see it during the day unless it was cloudy you could see something 
I said, how come you never went over? He goes, we tried it. You can't get there by foot because you're definitely going to get hurt. And when I pulled the satellite image, I'm like, yeah, I could see what he's saying. You don't want to fall down because if you fall down, that's how much cactus there there is in the area. You will get hurt. And what the that the spines are quite big on them. Oh yeah, they're and they make you itch. You could be allergic to them. But uh, I've fallen into those cactus before, and my back welted up for like a week, and it was so itchy and hot. Yeah, it's, it was the worst. So yeah, I, not, I didn't I... want to take the risk. <laughs> what? We just get like nettles over here, and uh, do you know what a, a, a nettle is? A needle, a little tiny needle. No, a, a nettle. Never heard of it. It's a plant that has tiny, tiny hairs on it, and it, it's oh, like, yeah. and it's like a bee sting. If you okay, yeah, but we, I'm glad we don't have cactus. Well, we have those too. Guy would fall in them as well. Yeah. So th there's some weird stuff. Now, I, I did a ton of research to try to find out, and I ran into one guy. He said there was something similar that he, he and his neighbors saw, which was a, a place called Sun City, which was about 55 miles from where my parents lived. And he said this light was there for months. And we couldn't get to it. I don't know why. I think because there was the – oh, that's what it was. It was the CAP, the Central Arizona Project, which brings water from the Colorado River right through the state. And they would have had to have gone all the way around it and going through the desert, again, in the desert. And they're old guys, but um, he saw my story about it. And, I, you know, if anybody knows, contact me at you know, seeing UFOs, whatever. And, uh, yeah, he said one day it was just gone. Never saw it again. He didn't see any helicopters or anything. Who knows? They could have done it when he was sleeping because it was a little further away, it sounded like. Um, or he didn't think about it. But, yeah, I don't know. What if there's craft that are that are buried, you know, like in the movie War of the Worlds? They're buried. Why would they stay lit, though? Why would they, like, just, like, stay? Well, that's a great question. What do you mean? Well, I think they were off, but I think if a craft or mothership or a signal was detected or it was on a timer to activate at this time, and like a beacon, and maybe they, the alien craft could find them easier. And it's possible that our military, when the thing got bright enough, gave off the signal for them to uh, find it. The way I've always imagined if if we was to be uh, the if we was to be the aliens visiting a another race yeah is a bit like Star Trek you know we would we'd have this protocol that we cannot make ourselves seen to a race that is less um, advanced than ourselves. Because yeah. I, I, I genuinely think that that would be a thing. I think that would be a rule when we start to head out. Wouldn't it have to be? I think it would have to be. I think it would. You know, you couldn't visit a simul uh, si simulation. <laughs> you couldn't visit a civilization that had only just discovered, you know, how to make swords and things like that, because I'm pretty sure that they, any civilization, if they were to fight or anything like that, would probably, a, a sword would be a generic thing across planets, you know, a weapon of some kind. Yeah. If, they, if they were, they would, if they could figure out how to make something like that, but nothing else, you wouldn't introduce yourself and say, you know, we're from the planet Earth. They wouldn't even understand it. They would think you were. You, they would think you were you you. It was witchcraft, you know. Right. Of course. They would not think. They wouldn't understand aliens. They wouldn't understand other planets. Don't you think though? Now we're at that point where we realized that, and if aliens did come here, 
we would be more accepting to their technology as a reality, not magic. You know, a thousand years ago, maybe it was magic, maybe 200 years ago, right? Wouldn't it have to be in the 1880s? They didn't have any telephones or they barely had pictures. I I think we would accept. I think we would accept it. I don't think that they would make a move. I just it's if they can travel millions and millions of light years or do whatever they're doing or moving how they're moving, why would they even be interested in what we have to offer? Because we don't have anything to offer. How do you know? How do you know that? Because if we've got something to offer, then they'll just take it. Maybe they are. But they don't need to make themselves known. They're not. But this is what I'm saying. It's going back to what you were saying about disclosure never being a thing. We will never be more advanced oh, right. than them. Right. They will just keep it. They will keep adva- advancing at the same rate that we're advancing. Yeah. You know, who knows what technology, if this same race was visiting us right back, say if we go back to, it's probably thousands of years, but say if we just go back to the 1940s, for example, say if that was the first time the Earth was ever visited, which I don't think it was, but say if it was, their technology will have come strides and strides ahead of ours already. Because I we're still using rockets, you know. What they what they would have learned about this planet, the different materials. There's just no. They'll have already studied us. There's no point in doing. They'll and they'll have seen what we are as a species, what we do to each other, you know. It's we're probably just something that's. They're probably just curious about us, you know, us and other races. There's probably many races out there that are like ours and they think, sorry to say, but they probably think let's not bother with them. Look what they, until they can grow up. Right. Yeah, exactly. We're not, I mean, we studied ants, but uh, once we learned what we needed from them, that's enough. We don't need to keep learning. Just leave them alone. I think they feel that, I think that's what we are to them. We're like ants. We can't understand them, even though people think we have a relationship with them. I'm, I'm trying to think as logically as possible, like what makes sense? Well, if they're intelligent, they would, be, they would probably decipher our language and learn how to speak or use a translator. I don't know. But <clears throat> it's like that movie Arrival. How do we know how to talk to them? When they're so weird and so different and they talk with ink in forwards and in reverse, I mean, that that's a, that just blew my mind, like uh, how real that seemed to me, how hard it would be to figure out what they're saying. Didn't they try and blow them up? Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they, they planted a bomb on one of them, didn't they? Yeah, I think it was in the camera case or the camera. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it did blow up. Yeah, I mean, I don't think a race, an alien race, would trust us. At this stage, I do not think they would have any trust in humanity whatsoever. They would think these people use threaten each other with nuclear weapons. That they 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 go to war over what another country has. They 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 war off. They go to war off other people's beliefs. Why would they accept us? Do you know what I mean? We're, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we're racist against people's color. Still, people say it's, it's not a thing anymore, but it is. It's huge, uh, and that's the same species. Imagine if aliens came down here. There's no way we would uh, accept them. No way. We wouldn't trust them, and they definitely shouldn't trust us. Have you seen that film, District Nine? Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, I have it, yeah. Yeah, and I kind of imagined if they came down here for that long, we'd probably get pissed off with them. You know, we 
taking all our <laughs> space and this get out go yeah. back go back home yeah you know that might be you know we might not be interested well you see how filthy and dirty those aliens were yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. but th- this is it i mean the only th- the only reason why us as a species would be interested in them is what they have to offer yeah. it's not for friendship it'll never be about friendship why not i think it could be it depends on the alien no it could be for some of us rich but for for, for our governments it'll never be about friendship it'll it, it, it'll always be about what we can get for us yeah yeah that's all we're going to be thinking right for you and i yeah i would love yeah. to shake a green man's hand <laughs> but you know it's for for your government for my government it's going to be a, it will be about how can we get one up over the other countries our own countries now i don't know if i'm a dreamer or what but i would think that if the aliens did come here and interacted with us and or our government i think um the world would have to unite and even though we would want to use the aliens to try to get one up the aliens won't let that happen the aliens will we would think that the aliens could destroy us if we tried anything like that. So the aliens come here in peace and the world has to unite. I think the world would have to unite in case there was an alien invasion, because I wouldn't trust them. I think the aliens would come here and I think they would fake like us. (laughs) I'm telling you, I really feel like it's a bad idea trying to make contact, but I don't think we have a choice. Well, I I always I've always thought this when they sent Voyager out and they put basically a whether they put a star map on there of where we are yeah 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 so that they basically gave them a map of how to get here yeah I personally think that's that was a bad idea we have no, no choice, choice though, though. <laughs> what to we give have them to a try. Map? Yeah, you have to do it. You have to try because man's instincts are to venture out. Yeah, we take risks. Yeah. And I know that's a humanity risk, but I think it's necessary. And plus, I think in reality, they know how big space is. That What are the odds somebody's going to find it anyway? Yeah, and and I suppose is that argument, if a a civilization is that advanced, then it would be you would hope it would be civil. You would hope, but they could be bastards too. Well, they might not necessarily be. I know we've gone off a bit on a tangent here, but uh, from what we started out talking about, but it's interesting because they, they, we, what we may think is them being a bastard. They just may not have any empathy and they may be all about their race and, Mm. You know, they may love their own kind that much that they, if they need something from another species, they'll just take it to progress their kind. But they'll never screw each other over, ever. Right. Well, I think humans would do the same thing. But we, you know, we would screw each other over, but we would do whatever it took to save humanity. Yeah, look at the... What? You would hope. Yeah. And I look at this virus now that's going around. Yeah. It's what do just, we do? You know? It's just hit Britain as well. We had uh, our first case in Arizona about two weeks ago. Some student at Arizona State University. Yeah, we, we got uh, two cases in uh, a little city called York in mm-hmm in england and that's actually not quite that's it's about 60 miles away from me it's not far at all no it's uh, it's it's scary it is scary so i don't believe in flat earth 
I believe there's nine planets instead of eight. I like long walks on the beach. <laughs> and I believe someday I'll be abducted again. I don't think I've ever been abducted, but I've had a lot of dreams when I was younger. Um, that was bizarre, having these dreams without having any knowledge of abductions. You know, walk outside during a thunderstorm, seeing a UFO over my pool in the backyard. We had a huge acre, a nice one acre yard with a pool, tons of grass and the storm clouds separated. And there are this UFO, pretty big, like 30 feet. And then two other little UFOs came out and danced around a little bit, other little tiny disks. But the weird thing about it, it tilted on its side, like at a 45 degree angle and inched its way up to me. And when I looked at the craft, you know, and analyzing what I'm looking at, it looked like a Tetris puzzle. And I think these craft have the ability to change their shape. And I know that's weird, but I, I think uh, they may have atmospheric flight and space flight. And maybe the craft changes uh, its shape or something for that. But it was weird seeing all these little different grooves all along the ship. Even the little ones had it. But it's, that was a dream. <laughs> and no, it's funny you should say that because um, when I had uh, Osvaldo Franco on last, we, we were speaking. I can't remember what made me say it, but I said, like, Flight of the Navigator. Oh, yeah. And that yeah. thing had – that did change shape Yeah. For, for, for aerial flight and for space flight. Wow, that's right. That's maybe I had the movie. Well, back then I don't think it was out yet, and it was '82 when that happened. When I had these dreams around '80, '80, '81, '82. Well, I remember seeing that as a kid, and I think I, it came, I, yeah. I used to watch that. Um, I think it came out in '86. Oh yeah, yeah. This would have been way after you'd have had these dreams. But what if? I mean, I think I think Osvaldo said something about that somebody who he was was the, the writer of somebody who had something to do with that film. There's some truth to that craft, apparently. Right. I need to look this up. Um, yeah, 1986. I just looked. But that 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 um that video that I've been meaning to do for a long time about. Uh, how UFOs have changed over the years, um, mm -hmm. like from the from what we used to see in the 1940s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, uh, 90s up till now, uh, has been like a, it's been so, it's, it's kind of changed with the fashion. do you? Wouldn't you agree? It's yeah, of course. Yeah, UFOs were more bubbleish. Yeah. You know, like the cars were in the 50s. Yes, and... like the American cars. American cars, yeah. And then in the 60s into the 70s, they UFOs kind of like got a little more streamlined. And so were the, the wings on the back of the car, you know, like the fenders. They were getting sharper and less rounded. Yep. And then in the 80s and 90s, the disc came out was very popular disc and more sleek and aerodynamic, the sports model, as Bob Lazar put it. And our cars became more like that. That is so true. I wonder what that could mean, Rich, the fact that the UFOs kind of... <laughs> is it a psychological like a... thing? Like mass hallucination? Or is it that we're... That we're, uh, we're designed... The Matrix. Yes. <laughs> Because we're in a matrix reality. Either that, that or the fake. Or they're fake, yeah. And people are just modeling them on, and hoaxing them. On what they think looks modern at the time. Yeah. Boy, that stinks. So UFOs don't really exist. No, I do think they exist. I just think Well, people... aliens. I'm sorry, go ahead. Because somebody's, somebody came up with the idea... Because it wouldn't just pop into your head. Let's make up aliens. Let's right. make let's make up flying saucers. You know, somebody's had the real deal. 
it's just so people just always adapt it it's it's like if you look at um okay um, weird example but you look at a werewolf film from 1950s yeah you look at the werewolf back then it's very much like that and they redid that one with Anthony Hopkins and uh, they kind of did him in the old style werewolf. But you look at the werewolves now, they're like streamlined, like big muscly things. And they kind of change with the times to how film goes. But it's exactly the same with anything that's been made up. And a UFO, so like I say, it's a strange, strange example, but a UFO has changed with film and the way that um cars have been designed over the years the way that anything's been designed airplanes um that doesn't mean to say i don't believe in ufos but back to the flight of the navigator ufo that is what i probably think that i probably think they are like that that i probably think they can do that i think you're right they could that dream that you had when you were a kid and didn't even really know about UFOs. Maybe it wasn't a dream. Well, I've had that dream several times, just different versions. Um, but you know what's really weird is that it's unlike any UFO that we would see in pop culture, which is very interesting in itself. I can't if I could draw what it looked like, then I think you would get the full value of what I'm saying because it it looks like nothing. We It's disc, but it's a weird looking. There's things on it that have never been seen before yet. It is a dream or is it then I, now the one thing I was just going to say is almost all of the dreams I've had with UFOs happened in a thunderstorm or near a thunderstorm. Which is weird. Very strange. I've had some footage uh, sent recently from a thunderstorm. I've had, I've seen a few. Some of some of the pieces of footage that that I've seen of UFOs in thunderstorms looks like the most believable that I've seen. That you've seen. That I that I've that, yeah. Not just me, other people have seen them as well. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, you, like uh, UFO sightings that are in thunderstorms. Uh, you've seen the ones over the volcanoes as well. Yeah, yeah. Some of them look really, really good. And you're kind of like, that, I don't think that's fake. That something is there. Something's... <laughs> well, I can't remember which volcano one, but I saw a really good one um, about a year ago. And it was just, it was amazing. It was just this this thing that went into the vol- over the volcano, stopped yeah. and then straight out. Don't I don't want people to get the wrong idea if they've watched this much of the show that um, I don't believe in UFOs. You know, that's why I'm here. I believe in UFOs with aliens in them. I believe that they're here, but I don't know if they've maybe they've always been on the planet or got here millions of years ago. But I'm not, I don't know if they're coming and going. Um, but I do believe there's an alien presence currently on the Earth. Yeah. It's just nobody knows what it is. Well, somebody knows what it is. But we I, don't have the answers. We'll keep you looking. and I will. Yeah. We'll keep looking and searching, but we, we have no idea. If they're at the moon, they're under the ocean... Not in the ocean, under the ocean, I think would be a safe place. I talked about this the other night. You know, Earth has plates. You know, we have seven continents that are constantly drifting, and yeah, that's what causes earthquakes and whatnot. If you were to remove the ocean and just look at the Earth without it, you would see all these cracks, these fissions yeah. that, you know, where, the, you know, like the Ring of Fire, where there's a lot of, um, volcano activity you can see it looks like stitching on a baseball and that goes around the whole globe and you can see how plate tectonics actually is moving well if they had 
water on Mars and Mars was like Earth, how come there's no stitching of these plates moving? Did they not have the same type of uh, planet as us? You know what I mean? Was yeah. Mars just just a rock that, that there were no earthquakes? Plates weren't moving? Yeah, no, you're saying that. So, so you, like, when you look, I mean, I've looked at Mars many times on, uh, you know, the Google uh, version of Mars. Yeah. And you would think you could see some of these um, Fish, plates. These cracks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. It, it, I mean, there's cracks everywhere over, and there's that massive, big, giant slash taken out of it, which is very interesting. Um, but yeah, there, there's, it doesn't look like any plates, and you would have thought that any planet would have these kind of. They would. Um, but would that depend on the core, though, of the planet? Yeah, I guess so. But my thing, another thing is. I think it's the Pangea era. I'm not sure. But when all the Earth's mass was just together. So what happened? Did Where did this glob of... Uh, where did this glob of land come from? And then what made it break up? It's just... The Earth sounds mechanical to me. It sounds... It's like a machine. That's what I'm saying. Somebody turned it on, man. I think Earth is a machine. How does that grab you? When you say it's a machine, do you mean somebody made it? Of course. The creator, whoever God is, whoever created the solar system or everything, the universe. There is evolution. We are real. We're not in a matrix. The planet is real, but it's more or less just like an a plant, yeah, an experiment. And that's all we are. Why not? It makes sense. Don't we see ghosts and things that move? Who's moving it? Maybe somebody's moving the puzzle. We just can't see it. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've never thought of it that way. Neither have I. First time ever. <laughs> just off the cuff. Yeah. I think Earth may be a machine. That's my that's my show tonight. Earth is a machine. That's crazy. Well, I need to hurry up and edit this video then if that's your show so I can put a link in. I can always link the show afterwards. Yeah, I, don't worry about it. If I don't edit it. It, uh, Earth is a ma- meet the machine man. No, that's, but I... Uh, that's a good title. Earth is a machine. I think so. You're not going to make this the, that title. Are you? For this video? No. Good, okay. No, you can have that one. Because, because that means people have got to get this far in the video. And as we all know, that it's, it's only the hardcore subscribers that stay on for this long. Yeah. How long have we been going for? Two hours and 15 minutes. Okay, okay. Well, I, I think at this point, we will... Um, I think we should move on to another video, but we'll say good good night, God bless for this video. And then me and you can do another video in the week. Because well, let me, I, yeah. Because, ahead, I, because I think there's loads to discuss. And I, I, I really want to do a video with you on To The Stars Academy as well. I also really... I still have a, a bunch of stuff to talk about that yeah. will be meaningful to this whole entire interview. Um, you know, I appreciate you taking this, uh, taking the time to have me on. I, I this went by so fast, I can't believe it. No, mate, I, I, I'm I'm honored to have you on the on the show. It's it. I was very nervous to in is, when you interview somebody who's not only got a channel, but a very good friend. We speak every day. It's kind of unnatural to yeah. interview somebody who's a friend. Do you know what I mean by that? I know because... I know because it's unnatural to be the, the guest because yeah. you're a friend and you have a channel. It's weird, yeah. I totally get it. 
Yeah, because I'm trying to I'm trying to talk to you. I'm, I'm still 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 interviewing at the minute, but yeah, because we're trying to talk to each other as uh, being professional. Um, but at the same time, we're friends, so it's it's weird. It's weird, but we'll get used to it. Yeah, and uh, I just need to learn how to go live because these videos will go down better live. Man, I'm sorry we went this long. You're going to have so much editing. It's ridiculous. Oh, don't worry about it. I'll enjoy it. I'll All enjoy right. it. I'm going to try and cut back on the editing people that are still watching this video so that you, I can get the videos out faster. Uh, we've done a, we've tried a, a little bit of a new thing with uh, this. Well, it's probably not a new thing. It's been there forever. I just didn't realize that I could record a video through Skype. Um, hopefully it's worked. Otherwise. Oh, that's right. Been, we did do it that way, huh? Otherwise, we've just been talking for two hours. Oh, my God. That would suck. Well, yes and no. I mean, it wouldn't but be, suck, but. Before we go, Rich, can you just remind everybody where they can find you and what you're going to be doing this year? No, I'm not interested. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> I always wanted to do that. Um, I know. Well, that's strange. You froze, Rich. There we go. Right? So where can you find me and all that and what's going on this year? Yes. Well, you can find me on a Goof on Radio Stream on YouTube. And that is Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's, it's not Saturday yet, but let's just say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. And it's a live show, two to three hours, depending on what's going on. Um, this year, I am finally going live on the stream on the road. Like uh, once you get a certain amount of subscribers, you can stream live on your mobile device. And I will be doing those hopefully minimally once a month. So I'm going to be heading over to Tombstone, Arizona, going to do some of the mines down there in June. Uh, maybe this Friday going to see the UFO that's buried under a dam about 10 minutes from me here in Phoenix. Going to Jerome, Arizona. Again, the Arizona Hotel. It has a haunted room that I need to make a reservation for. Probably do that in August. Yeah, just, um, oh, and the, the, the Stardust Ranch perimeter. Not going to the actual ranch, just the perimeter of it. Because we they have a new owner there. And uh, I don't want to ruffle his feathers or her feathers. So the perimeter is just as haunted as the actual land itself because it's all part of the same land. And uh, there's anything from aliens to cryptids to who knows what out there. Shape-shifting. Yeah, it's going to be shape-shifters. <laughs> I'm going to shape-shift for you. Yeah, it's going to be a good year, man. So I'm excited uh, about that. And you can find me on Twitter under Goofon Network, Facebook, Goofon I think it's Goof on Network as well. And uh, Instagram, all over the place. Well, mate, it has been an absolute pleasure. Um, okay, folks, so anybody that's new to the channel, um, make sure I'm going to leave all the links for Rich below in the description. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up and get this video shared out because it is becoming so hard for creators like me and Rich to actually get ourselves out there with the algorithm that how YouTube is. If you do want to support the channel further, you can head over to my Patreon page. There's some of my artwork on there. Rich also has finally a Patreon page. And he's, oh, he's yeah. overtaken, you've overtaken me already. Have I? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I didn't mean to. He's got some very, very loving fans over there at Goof on Radio. But I mean, that you have a very, I and mean, I want to say this because you have such a um, relationship with every single one of them. You know, you, you know all your sub, most of your subscribers that are regular. You talk to them in the actual live stream. Now, I don't do live shows yet, but this is something that I want to start doing. 
maybe with your help, Rich, you can teach me how to do it. No, but, not really. You know, uh, <laughs> I just want to always do that, too. Now, of course I would help you. Of course, my God. Um, yeah, doing it live would be great. I would love to see you live, man. You would, I, uh, it would be great. I just don't yeah. think I could go for two hours. That you, you don't I have don't, to. I know. I don't know how you do it. I oh. don't know how you, I've never seen that. I don't know how you can, you, I mean, you've, you never kind of like get stuck for what to say. <laughs> it's a lot of preparing. It's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that I have bottled up inside of me. Yeah. You definitely put a lot of love into that show and it, it, it's definitely noticed, but yeah, Rich, thank you very much for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Good night. God bless folks. Mind the bugs. Don't bite. I'm alien addict.